In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to burn meshes with fire in Blender. So for example, at frame 70, it's already starting to burn. At frame 140, it's probably completely burned. All that's left is a little bit of smoke. At frame 120, some of the object might still be available over there, but you can see it's slowly but surely burning. All I need to do is render this out, which I won't, but you're welcome to render it out on your end. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. The first thing you want to do is select the object that you wish to burn. I could use the default cube, but I am going to make use of the icosphere. Making use of a piece of paper would also be pretty cool. You do want to add lots of subdivisions to this. In this case, over here, I'm just going to add five. And I'm going to right click Shade Smooth. Then I'm going to press Shift D to scale it, Shift D for duck right click S to scale so it's a little bit bigger and let me just make sure that my keystrokes are visible in case my accent sucks and now we've got icosphere.001 selected we're going to go to the modify properties add modifier we're going to add a displacement modifier we're going to change the strength to 0 0.2 and we're going to click new and we're going to go to the texture properties choose clouds and we're going to just increase the strength to 0 0.6 so it looks nice and smooth. We're going to go back to the modify properties and we're going to change local to globe. We're going to press G. Oh, sorry. Make sure you press 1 to be in front orthographic view. Then press G. Chuck it there. Press I and click on location. Change to frame 150. And then press G. And put the dot in the middle there so it covers the entire object look around make sure that it does looks like it does then press I location numpad 1 go back to keyframe 1 and we can see this object slowly move and cover that which is it which is exactly what we want now that we've got these two objects the first thing we want to do is select the default the primary icosphere we're going to go to the um, physics properties and we're going to choose dynamic paint and we're going to make this the canvas so we're going to add canvas we're going to change the format to image sequence we can up the resolution if you want a nicer looking result maybe hd like 180 um, you do want to make this end at frame 150 and you could up these sampling steps for a better result but my computer is not that great so i can't do that and finally you want to go to the output and you want to change this to UV, map, and choose the default folder where you wish to download this. And I'm going to click on UV map over here and click accept. And there you go. Everything is selected and looks correct. I'm just going through all these quickly, skimming through them as fast as I can. Yes, I'm happy with that. Next thing we want to do is Select your icosphere.001, click dynamic paint, change it to brush, because this is what will brush the canvas, click add brush, change the color to, I don't know, orange, and then make it black, and change the mesh volume to proximity. And that's about it. So now we just click on this the main icosphere, scroll down to get to output, and all we need to do now is bake. See you after the bake. All right, so the baking is done, and we will have a nice um, burnt effect on our globe as the fire burns, which is good. Um, one thing to adjust the, how far the burnt effect spreads in terms of its proximity. So if we go to frame 55, well, let's go to 70, I guess. Um, so the proximity of the frame is pretty much one blender unit so the burn will spread relatively far from the proximity of this area yeah if you want to make it less you just make the number lower but i'm quite happy with that the next thing we want to do is select your icosphere your main icosphere and where it shows dynamic paint uh, well so where it shows modifiers click on modifier click on add modifier and you want to use a boolean modifier and it will only work properly if you take your boolean modifier 
you lift it up above your dynamic paint modifier. And once you've done that, make sure it's set on difference. Click on the eyedropper tool, select the icosphere.01, and make sure it's set to exact. Because so, now when we, for example, go to frame 70, we can see it cut, it eats out at the object, which is exactly what we want. But we want to make sure that fire is coming from this area here that's been cut out on that surface. So the way we do that is we go to our physics properties on our main icosphere. We leave it on canvas, but we change from image sequence to vertex group. Probably make it 170, so it lasts a bit longer than the one. 150 would be fine, but 170 I think is a little bit better because you can see a bit more of the smoke as it's fully gone. And you want to change from paint to weight. And you want to click on this plus sign to make sure that it gets weighted in, which is crucial. And we've got the catch here. And the reason why these options aren't so showing is that you want to just quickly save this file. And when you save this file, catch options, you can bake this in, but we're not ready to bake it in. We need to click the icosphere.001, leave it on proximity, but change the distance now to 0 0.1. And by doing that, you're saying that the flames might extend beyond this parameter here. It's going to might extend beyond this parameter here by 0.1, but the burn marks could, could extend up to 1. So the burn marks would be ten, could go 10 times further than the flame marks, so to speak, uh, from this original burn section that will burn, if that makes sense. So I'm quite happy with that. The next thing we want to do is select your main icosphere, scroll down, and bake it in and I'll see you after the bake. Alright now that that bake is done this is gonna look pretty cool we've basically created the bake of it's uh, of this area it's going to there we go of this area now as the weighted um, what you call it it's a, it's a UV weighted bake uh, DP weight this, this vertex group is now weighted and we can now make sure that the fire goes there. And the way we do that is we press Shift A, Mesh, Default Cube, and we're just going to scale this up so to something like that. Press G Z, and assuming yeah, oh that's perfect. It's not touching. This is slightly above. That's perfect. Then we're going to click on Fluid Domain, and there we see the flames already which is really good to see let's select this and let's click over here disable and render make sure that's turned on and you probably want to do that with that so we don't see it so it doesn't get in the way perfect right Next thing we want to do is maybe up the resolution to at least 64. And then we want to turn on adaptive domain and increase the resolution to at least 3 for a much better, cleaner result. And same reason for the noise over here. We turn this on, change the strength to 3, and uh, change this animation will only be 170 frames, so put on that. Make sure it's resumable selected and choose all. Right, so I'm quite happy with that, but now we need to select this over here. And now that we've got this selected, we need to scroll up, minimize the dynamic paint, and click on Fluid. Change this to Flow, change this to Fire, changes to inflow and uh, choose the vertex group if you don't choose the vertex group the whole sphere will be a fire whereas when you choose the vertex group only this top piece will be the fire and that's what we just cr created which is great and i'm quite happy with that we also want to add a texture and we can't add the existing texture because that's what we use on the this sphere i just made disappear the icosphere so we're going to with that selected, we're going to click over here and we're going to add a new texture and we're going to use clouds. We probably want to increase the contrast and I'll explain to you what this does now to about 3 
and change the size to about 0 0.1. Basically, wherever you see black on this image, that is where fire will not be emitted from. Everywhere we see white, that's where fire will be emitted from. And this will give it a nice, cool, realistic effect. We can take this one step further. We go to the, our modified properties, and sorry, our physics properties, and within fluid, in the flow, down here by textures, it's got an offset. You want to go to frame one. At frame one, hover over offset with your mouse and press I. Go to frame 150 and change the offset to, I don't know, anything, 0 0.6 and then press I. And what that does is, as the animation plays out, it basically makes sure that this is moving, which will create a much more realistic flame effect. Um, yeah, so anyways, I'm quite happy with that. The next thing we want to do is go back to frame one and everything is done. Now all we need to do is bake this in. I'll see you after the bake. All right, so that render has been completed. So now when we, for example, go to frame 70 and turn off that, if you're in solid view mode, you'll see your flame, which is great. However, you won't see your flame if you're in material view mode or render view mode. Let's go into render view mode. I'm going to press numpad 1, and we should be seeing flames out here because we can see it in solid view mode. So the way we fix this problem is we pull this up here, change your timeline to your shader editor, make sure you've got the cube, which is your, um, your domain selected, and click new. Zoom in here, click on the principal BSDF, press X to delete, press Shift A, click on shaders, and go to your principal volume. Connect your volume to your volume. And if you just mess with the, uh, the, the black body intensity, you'll see flames. But you don't have as much control as if we worked with the emission level, which we will do now. So we'll press Shift A again, and we'll click Color Ramp, and we will connect this color to the emission color. And then we'll also increase the emission strength from 0 to 5, and then we'll press Shift A, Input, and we're going to use an attribute, now, for the attributes to work, you need to know the names of the attributes. So you have, it is case sensitive, so you have to type in lowercase f-l-a-n-e for flame. Press enter. And there you go. We've got a beautiful white flame with an emission strength of 5, which we could modify. Let's press plus twice here. Bring this here. Bring this here. Let's make this one yellow. Bring it all the way up. And make it yellow. And then select this one over here. Bring it all the way up and make it deep orangey red. And there you go, we have a beautiful flame. Other things you might want to do, so we can see the smoke better, maybe make the intense density 10. So now the smoke is a bit more visible. Let's try making the emission strength 10. And uh, perhaps increasing the temperature to 1300. And it might still look pixelated, we'll get to that shortly. but. There you have it. We now have beautiful flames that are showing in our render viewport. Next thing we want to do is we want to select our main icosphere, click new. And next thing we want to do, right, so next thing we want to do is press shift A, texture, and find, where is it, image sequence. There we go. And wherever you downloaded that image sequence, go to that area. I downloaded it here. And it was 150 frames. And fortunately, I did this exercise a few times. So I only want to capture the first 150. Hold and shift and select that. And press import image sequence. And chuck this down here. And then I just connect. Well, before I do it, I, I want need to add shift A. RGB mixer. Where is it now? Mix RGB, sorry. There we go. And we can chuck this attribute to the fact and chuck this color.
color to the bottom section here and then connect this color to the base color here and let's move this out here and if you want you can add a, another color ramp I guess which is probably a bit excessive but why not ah jeez sorry about that let's select you could just add a kind of yeah but for whatever reason I'm not too sure why it's not working so we're just going to type in color app and connect this color to the second color and yeah I'm quite happy with that the other thing I want to do is reduce the roughness make it 0 0.3 I'm going to re-add these images. Maybe that'll get rid of it. Yes, it does. Okay, that's good. So it's no more. And I want to go to material viewport to see if the burn marks are more noticeable. It's very hard to see. But uh, it is there, trust me. <laughs> we just added it. But uh, yeah, that's it. Now the only thing we need to do now is set up our scene. So, first thing I want to do is go back to our timeline and bring this timeline down so it's out of the way and press Shift A, Mesh and we're going to add a, where is it now, a plane. I'm going to press S to scale this plane out. I'm going to press Numpad 1, choose Material Viewport press G, Z, bring this down to about there which I'll be happy with and then add a material to this and obviously I want a beautiful glossy material make the roughness 0 0.2 so it really shines choose this light over here, change it to sun make the strength, I don't know, uh, let's try 20 and change the color to a slightly warmer color like that. See how it looks in render view mode. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Now to make your, if you if you do this in cycles, you won't have this problem. Cycles is amazing. But if you want to have a much better EV job, you go to your render settings, and we're going to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflection. And most importantly, volumetrics, change this to two pixels to make the file look a lot more realistic. And volumetric shadows for the shadows to look good as well. Next thing we want to do is just select this. Well, instead of selecting this light, let's click on the world. And let's change this to an environmental texture. You can go to hdrhaven.com to find a nice environmental texture. I've randomly downloaded a couple in my downloads folder so let's see if I can find them and I'm just going to use this one here and then I'm just going to reduce this strength to let's try 0 0.3 and let's just find it an angle that seems somewhat interesting there we go press control alt number at zero select your camera press G and just find a spot that you like with your camera something like this should be perfect any other thing you might want to do is select Let's, let's mess with this material quickly. We're selecting the Arcosphere, going back to the shader settings, and we're just going to play around with the colors here. This is all to do with personal preference. I mean, the exercise is pretty much done now. Now it's just about getting that final, final result that you like in particular. So turn on auto refresh. Get a slightly better result, I'm sure. 
And yeah, that's about it. Perhaps I should make this a little bit darker. I don't know, you can have fun, play around with it. And yeah, that's it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And now you know how to burn things with fire in Blender. <laughs>